a video just about improving a game through the options menu. This is my kind of content, guys. First of all, if you find the movement and aiming in for Spoken to feel a little bit delayed, it's because by default they are. In the control settings, left and right stick sensitivity is not camera rotation, it's actually the analog stick's dead zone. At the default setting, your inputs on the stick are not being registered until this point in a tilt. Push this setting up to max at 2.0 and everything should feel much more responsive. I personally prefer that setting at either 1.7 or 1.8, just play around with it, see what feels right. I sadly didn't get access to the PC build early, so let me know how the default keyboard and mouse setup feels if you've played it. Next, if you don't like constantly having to bring up a menu to switch spells, you might want to turn on automatic support spell switching in the gameplay balance menu. Then after you cast a support spell, it will automatically switch out to another spell that is not on cooldown. This works pretty well when you're first learning the combat so you can kind of spam stuff, but for high level play you will probably want to manually switch. Also in gameplay balance is spell switching slowdown at none, slow, or full pause. On none, you can freely switch out spells while the game runs in real time. Default slow applies a slow-mo effect when you bring up that screen. Full pause will completely halt the game when you switch. You could use that to make this a turn-based RPG if you want, but personally I prefer the no slowdown setting. Now wait a second, hold on, is the main character and her cuff talking too much for your liking? Well, in the accessibility settings, turn cuff chat frequency to low or minimal. Problem solved. In the controller settings, most of the buttons can be completely remapped, but notice right here the use of the touchpad. You can change out to different magic types with a left or right press of the D-pad, but that requires you to take your thumb off the movement stick. Not ideal. Instead, swipe on the touchpad right for purple magic, left for red, down for blue, and up for green. Later on though, you will probably start implementing attack switching to take care of that instead. Back in the accessibility options, you might prefer magic parkour sprinting set to toggle. Then when you activate a parkour sprint, you can take your finger off the button to freely move that camera around. If you need to cancel the toggle, just click in left stick. Also in accessibility, you might want to turn on automatic item gathering. There is a ton of collectible materials all over this game, which are used to upgrade your gear, so you don't want to be missing any as you're quickly parkouring around. With that setting on, you'll find that you'll probably be snagging a lot more things that would have just blown right by you. Now let's switch over to some graphics stuff for the PlayStation 5. The quality setting is going to give you the most crisp look, but you're going to really feel that lower frame rate when you're spinning the camera and during combat. For the photo mode, this is the best setting though, because all you need is one frame. Ray tracing mode looks a little less crisp, but the lighting and shadows pop a bit better with this on. The performance mode with a higher frame rate is probably what most of you will want to play at. It can chunk up the dynamic resolution from time to time, but everything feels much better to control and camera movement is much more fluid. And before I wrap this up, let's talk about the three difficulty settings. Here is a mini boss fight on easy, and keep an eye on the damage I'm inflicting and the damage I'm taking. Easy is probably the way to go if you just never play action RPGs. Here is that same fight, but on normal difficulty. This is a good balance setting that will be more in line with the default challenge of something like Horizon Zero Dawn, Assassin's Creed, Spider-Man, that kind of stuff. If you generally prefer your games to be more challenging than what I listed, I suggest you go with hard mode. The mobs out in the wild won't be too bad, but in boss fights you'll definitely feel the difference. 
There's a lot of other stuff you can tweak in the settings, but that's the stuff I recommend you mess around with right at the start. Now, if you like the idea of improving the playability of games entirely for free, might as well hit that subscribe and stick around. As always, I'm Alex, and thanks for watching.